I want to tell you, I don't want you to do that. I want you to own it. I want you to be proud of what you create. I want you to own the fact that you might be at level three and maybe me asking you, you might think I'm at level 72. It doesn't matter. Own it though. Like when I first started my business and we were working from home, I proudly always said, oh, I own a business. Oh, what do you own? I own the Cake Mamas. Welcome to the Push Podcast. Why push? Because a nudge is just too friendly. And friend, we're here to help you get your shit together. I'm Eddie. And I'm Janelle. And we're the Copelands. We've got three daughters, two businesses, a mortgage, and lots of responsibilities. So just like you, we're struggling to find that perfect balance of ambitious go-getter hustle while still staying present, loving our kids, and working on our relationship. (laughs) And doing the laundry, going to the grocery store. Oh, and don't forget being mindful. Yeah, all of the stuff. (laughs) So if you're juggling all the things, but you're also trying to get to the next level, guess what? You're in the right place. So get ready to be pushed. Hey guys, welcome back to the Push Podcast. I'm Janelle. Hey, and I'm Eddie. What's up? Hey, this is episode number 57, and we've got some fun stuff to talk about today. And I want to dive in with a what in the world. Uh Uh-oh, tell me. This is just something silly, but this is kind of to all of my friends who own businesses or if you ever plan on owning a business. I just want to tell you, you need to make things easy and simple for customers. Okay, tell me more. So Jersey Mike's, it's a sandwich place, kind of like Subway, right? They got like hoagies. They do have hoagies and you go in and it's a pet peeve of mine every time I go in there when a business thinks that you speak their language. Mm -hmm. So like if you own a cupcake shop, for example, you have these like, oh, we call those whoopee whoopies. What what the hell is a whoopee whoopie? Like whatever the hell, (laughs) like people make up their own names for things. And I'm all for that. But don't assume that everyone knows what that is. So here's an example. Jersey Mike's, you go in. And I went in the other day and I said, hi, can I get a turkey sandwich? And she's like, okay, number seven. And I said, I don't actually know your menu. I don't know what number it is. I just know I want a turkey sandwich. She goes, oh, okay, it's a number seven. Would you like it Mike's way? I don't actually know who Mike is. I don't know what Mike likes. I want it (laughs) Janelle's way. It drives me nuts. Like every time you go in, right? So then I was like, also, can I get a tuna sandwich? Oh, number 13. I just told you I didn't know what the number seven was, <laughs> they put right? You to use it language. Would you like that one, Mike's way? No, I wanted Sarah's way because it's for Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who Mike is and I don't care who Mike is. Just ask me what I want on my sandwich, right? So then it happens every time I go in there and I just like, I know that they're probably trained to say it, but it's annoying as a yeah. customer. So I couldn't help but to think of all my business owner <sighs> friends who also do that, right? And then not only do you order the sandwich the way you want it, right? But then they put a number seven and a number 13 on with a Sharpie on the sandwich. So I have no clue what your numbers are. <laughs> it wouldn't take too much longer for you to write T-U-R for turkey or T-U-N for tuna. That's my what in the world. Well, you're like, the hell with Mike. I want it Janelle's way. But yeah. here's the thing. I think it's completely reasonable. Why? Because one, Starbucks does it. What do they say? Starbucks makes you ask for a grande instead yeah, of a medium. Different. Everybody knows now. Everybody knows. Yeah, that, that's, that's what Mike's trying to do. Those are also legitimate <laughs> like, sizes. Okay, okay. So I think it's completely reasonable. Just like you think it's completely reasonable for Chick-fil-A to ask you oh, 45,000 questions. That's where this <laughs> so, came from. <laughs> okay, guys. So that uh, is not what in the world. Chick-fil-A asks way too many damn questions. No, you are just not smart when it comes to ordering food in the drive-thru. I'm going to take over the story that you were about to share because the people deserve the truth. (laughs) And here's the thing. If I called any of the children out of their rooms right now and asked them, hey, what's your experience when you go through? That's because you corrupted them. No, it's not. What's your experience when you go through a drive-thru with dad? Oh, he just, he can't make any decision. He all of a sudden (laughs) blinks. He has all these awkward pauses. He never knows what the hell any restaurant offers, even though he eats there all the time, right? These are like half truths. It's it's a total truth. So (laughs) Eddie's one of those guys, you guys, where... He goes to the drive through and he forgets like when they ask you what you want to drink. He's like, uh, what do you have? 
the same no, thing I they have not. everywhere no, else. I do not. Just like when people say, yeah, I'll take a side salad. <laughs> what kind of dressing? The same kind of dressing they sell everywhere else. No. Okay. So let me just clarify. I'm going to let you speak Let me just, let me just clarify. So we went to Chick-fil-A, right? And, and then there's an entire then, version of then, this story then that's then I, actually true. Go so ahead. So I, I'm usually driving when we go through the drive through So I'm, I'm like it, responsible for everybody's order, quote unquote. Um, which I don't like. So I prefer just to lean back and let you guys order because you guys got like all kinds of specialty items we don't, and everything. Actually, but yeah, you know, long story I'll get short. To Jordan's order in a second. Long story short, we go to Chick-fil-A and I say, Hey, let me have a number one. You know, and they said number one chicken sandwich. They said classic or, or spicy. Uh classic. And then they say, Okay. Would you like pickles or no pickles? Pickles or no pickles. Uh pickles. I guess, okay. whatever. What and kind then, of sauce would you and like? Then, and then I'm like, uh, roasted barbecue sauce. Perfect. How many? How many? Oh, shit. Uh, four. Okay. Would you like the combo? And, and, and I said a number one. Okay. What right? would you like to and, drink? And what would you like to drink? Um, uh, by the Palmer. way, he's so annoyed by <laughs> this. Arnold point. Palmer. And, they, and then they said- Sweetener, uh, unsweetened, uh, sweetened tea. Sweetener, and unsweetened tea. I was like- <laughs> <laughs> just, okay. He's ready to have a I don't breakdown. care what you give me. Just give me anything. Don't ask me no more questions. By the way, that was only the first, first order. order of and five of them. And they did that every single order. How and many sauces do you want? struggled every single time. Do you want that spicy classic? If I wanted spicy, I would have ordered spicy. But if you I wanted ordered deluxe, like an idiot. I want to order deluxe. This is what he said, guys. First of all, this <laughs> is what happens every single time Eddie goes through a drive through No, but Chick-fil-A every time, is very hold specific. On, they ask they like, say, welcome to Chick-fil-A. How can I take your order? Hey there. Uh, I say, how are you doing? How are you doing? And they uh, say, Sir, I'm fine. Thanks. How can I help you tonight? Uh, <laughs> swear to God. It's like he blinks. Even though he has a text message from all of us that tells you exactly what, what everyone wants. Okay. So he says, uh, can I get a chicken sandwich? No, I didn't. Yes. The guy says, okay, spicy or classic. No, he said, Why? Because you order a goddamn no, chicken said, sandwich. I said, let me get a number one. He said, right. spice. He said, classic or deluxe. I was like, classic. Spicy or regular? Or regular. The point is, regular. when I went <laughs> the following day, because I didn't get Chick-fil-A that night. When I went the following day, I said, Hey, how's it going? Can I get a number one deluxe, no cheese, spicy? Obviously, because you learned from my unsweetened iced tea, horrible, crazy experience. Ketchup and salt, (laughs) and whatever the honey mustard barbecue. Twelve sauces, and that's it. Okay, here's the thing. I think they have are so ridiculous service. And I said, you heard me. This tell me if I'm wrong. I said. I appreciate the level of service. No, they give you that's great, not what you that's said. What I, said. I said, I appreciate the level of service. I said, there has to be a more efficient way to do this instead of asking me 4,500 questions on one meal and okay. then asking it for each and every single meal. This is triggering my annoyance button again because <laughs> I was in so much pain sitting there watching you just flounder about in the Chick-fil-A Drive through. It was so painful okay, for the well, poor guy that my, helped you. What in the world? So as soon as he finished his order, which was ten minutes later, <laughs> there was thirty two cars now no, behind you. It? He drives away and he goes, "That was absurd. I can't believe the amount of questions he asked." <laughs> I said, "You didn't give him any information. He was more thoroughly annoyed by you than you were of him." It's well, true. I, you were. Oh. You're so annoying. And then I'm like. You have these awkward pauses during like a drive through interaction and Eddie swears that pausing is like effective communication. No, Nobody saying. gives a shit about your effective communication. All I they said, want you to order your goddamn food and pull forward. Okay, well, moving along. It was my what in the world. And yeah, now you're all but you up. were wrong. I'm telling you, ask any of the girls. As soon as we came home, I asked them, guys, what's your experience like when you go through a drive through with dad? He never knows what he's ordering. He just doesn't understand. He messes up our food all the time. He blanks out. He wants to have a conversation with them. He doesn't know anything on the menu. All of them said the same exact thing. So I can't be the problem. Yeah, you guys. You are. All, you get all. You guys can all. So be the here's problem. the last thing. <laughs> he always gets our orders wrong, no matter what. No. No matter what. Jordan sends a text message. He says, "What would you like from Chick Fil A?" She said, "I want a chicken sandwich and a Cobb salad." So he gets her a chicken sandwich combo. 
with a drink and fries that she no, didn't ask for. I said yes. a salad and on the side. And then she said, yeah, I you got said it. a no side fries. salad there instead no of fries. Okay, right. you said side salad instead of fries. And then you said, can I get a cob? And they said, we don't have a side salad cob. So you get home with this combo and some stupid side salad. And she goes, dad, all I wanted was a chicken sandwich and a si- and a, a, a cob salad. And you go, they didn't have a side cob salad. She goes, no, I asked for a cob salad. And a chicken sandwich. Yeah, she wanted two entirely different entrees. I didn't, I wouldn't. But okay, that's all she that's asked you for, mistake. too. It's yeah. not an honest mistake. It is. A few months <laughs> ago, you were going to Legends, and Fabiola said, I want okay. fried mushrooms and a cheeseburger. Uh, you, she said, no. I want a cheeseburger and fried mushrooms. And Eddie no, she said, literally I want asked a cheeseburger them to put fried mushrooms fried, inside of the cheeseburger. She said, I want a cheeseburger with fried onions. Like, fried mushrooms. Mu- fried mushrooms. She said, I want a cheeseburger with fried mushrooms. And I was like, Yeah, everybody knows that, that Legends has fried mushrooms. Right. So I didn't he know- asked them to literally put the mushrooms inside of the cheeseburger, you guys. Yes. No, I, I, Ask Fab. I ordered it just like that. I said, I want a cheeseburger yeah, with fried again, mushrooms. Yeah, but again, it's like and you have they- no common sense when you're reading someone's order. Okay. She that's ordered why I said, a chicken sandwich that's why and a cop salad. Take me off the ordering. Okay, duty. we're done. So we're gonna move on now because <laughs> now I'm super annoyed by you and your ordering <laughs> skills. But I want to talk to you about the fact that this weekend or this week, I don't know. I'm what so is today? sorry that my ordering is Eddie's way. <laughs> yeah, I wish it wasn't. I wish it was a normal person's way. So this weekend we wrapped up 10 years of business with the Cake Mamas. Super excited. And, you know, the goal was to liquidate everything, to close down with the community and to sell all of my equipment so that it could find new owners and live in new bakeries and bring lots of love and joy and revenue to other business owners. Right. So I had so many people come in to the bakery during our garage sale. I hosted a garage sale Um, put all the stuff on social media. And so many people came in and it was really awesome because a lot of them were small business owners. A lot of them were make homemakers, cake makers that want to eventually open a bakery. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So So people working like homemakers. Bakers. Bakers who say, Bakers working from home. Yes. Okay. Are we together? (laughs) We did it again. Okay. So (laughs) today I want to talk about (laughs) five lessons that I learned this weekend from all of you that came in to shop with me to Mm -hmm. purchase my stuff. So number one, this is a consistent thing that I find no matter where I go. If I'm at an event, if I'm hosting an event, if I'm a guest speaker somewhere, if I invite you to come to my garage sale, I'm genuinely trying to get to know you. So I asked everybody that came in like, hey, how are you? What's your name? Oh, what do you do? Do you make cakes? Do you own a business? Every single one of them says, oh yeah, I just, it's just something I do on the side. It's Mm -hmm. just, oh yeah, I just, I just do it from home. It's not that big of a deal. Knowing it's Oh, it's just a, a small thing, <laughs> right? Knowing that it's a huge deal yeah. for you and that you would love more than anything to pursue this full-time as, as a, a career, right? right? And so the first thing I want to tell all of you, stop making yourself small. And so at one point, like after the 25th person that did it, I literally was like, what's your name, Michelle? Can you come with me? We're going to go into the front really quick. So we went from the back of the kitchen And I like literally turned off the music and I was like, can I get everyone's attention? Does anyone here make cakes from home or have a cake business or something that you do from home uh, as far as a business? They all raised their hands. There's like maybe 10 women in there. And I said, I want to tell you guys something. I'm making an announcement. The number one thing that women do when I interact with them is they make themselves small. When someone asks you, what do you do? Do you have a business? That's your time to shine. That's yeah. your time to shine. And you're not say, talking about like lying about how big no, your business is. You're not talking I'm saying about like, like, oh my God, like, yeah, I make cakes from home. Up, I've been doing it for yeah. about a year. I'm trying to grow my following. I really love it. It's my passion. You know, I'm trying to get better every week, Wh- whatever the case may be. But no one ever says that. What's the consequence? Why is that so problematic for you to make yourself small? Why is it problematic? Because I think we already have a confidence issue, first of all. Right. And when you do that and you make yourself even smaller, it's not helping you expand. It's not helping you grow. It's not helping you step into the power that you'll need to eventually become successful as a business owner. Yeah. And I think it creates a duality within your cognitive dissonance, meaning that you want this to be a big deal. 
However, in your mind, your self-esteem and your emotions are, are constantly backing you up. And so when someone asks you, you go with the safe route and saying, oh, this is just something I do on the side. Well, knowing you belittle it. You you've got business it. cards, knowing mm-hmm. you got a website, right. knowing you got all these different things and you call it small because you haven't achieved the things you want to achieve. And I think it's like a form of protection. It's like, OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out there, but it, I don't want you to think I'm in a big deal. Right. So I'm going to protect myself and keep it safe. Mm-hmm. And another thing is, is like some of you when I'm like, oh, let me see. Can you show me on Instagram? Oh, my work's not that good. Oh, it's not that. I get it. I guess it's like an intimidation thing because yeah. I'm asking you. But I want to tell you, I don't want you to do that. I want you to own it. I want you to be proud of what you create. I want you to own the fact that you might be at level three. And maybe me asking you, you might think I'm at level 72. It doesn't matter. Own it, though. Like when I first started my business and we were working from home, I proudly always said, oh, I own a business. Oh, what do you own? I own the Cake Mamas. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's right. It's located in my home as of right right now in Covina, California. But we're looking for a place soon. You know, we'll be moving soon. Right. And do you believe that that mindset, that outward expression is why you were able to manifest a successful I believe business. that's why I closed so many sales. Right. I believe that's why I pushed myself to order high quality business cards and brochures. I believe that's why every single person, you can attest to this, that I gave a brochure to when I was working from home mm-hmm. asked me, is this a franchise? Right. This is so well put together. Are you sure you work from home? Yep. Because you never were thinking small. I just was not. Right. And so for people who are listening right now that you have aspirations for whatever it is, whether it's being a photographer, Mm -hmm. we talked about Jess, whether it's you want to be a personal trainer or you want to do anything of significance or of importance in your life. I think the first thing is you have to have the right approach and the right attitude of how you're going to share with the world. Yep. And, then and I so think number that one have is to, stop making yourself small. Yeah, you have to stop making yourself small. I think you have to make yourself relevant. And I think you have to portray the confidence that's needed in order for someone to have confidence in you. Agree. And so that's kind of a good segue into number two. I'm just going to tell you, it doesn't matter how many people follow you, how many people know you, you have to trust and believe that they are not following and watching your every move. Here's what I mean by that. We have been talking about closing the Cake Mama (laughs) since January. If I had a dollar within the last 48 hours for how many people messaged me and were like, wait, garage sale, what? Where are you going? Or how many people came in on Saturday when we were having the garage sale? Hi, I want to place an order for a cake in November. I literally almost cried real tears when I said, yeah, we've been closed for a month. Where have you been? You know, and so it was interesting because a lot of, again, the women that were shopping, trying to buy my stuff, I kept telling them, see, it's important for you guys to know I have 63,000 followers. People are not following my every move. I post every day, three to five times a day, and they still don't know that we're closing. And I've been talking about this now for nine months freaking month. This, right? this is why people, when you listen to the radio or back in the days when you listen to the radio, the same like commercials would come on every like yep. 10 minutes because the reality is, is that it is hard to reach people. It is hard to get people to stop what they're doing, to be to distracted by you, to pay attention. Doing in your yeah, and, and so you have to say it often. You got to say it with confidence and you got to say it frequently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that's one of the things we teach in our eight week business course yeah. is that you feel like you might be annoying when you continue to announce that you have holiday promotions or you have a deal or something going on or some sort of announcement. People literally, they're not seeing it. Right. Literally 63,000 followers and all day, every day for the past two days, people are like, wait, what? I wanted a place in order. I'm getting married. You're supposed to make my wedding cake. I'm like, sis, we've been closed for a month. Like, yeah. where have you been? You know? So I just want you to know, like, you may be struggling because you have 300 followers and you want 300,000. They're still not going to pay attention to you either. So just really do a good (laughs) job of serving the 300 that you have. And in marketing, there's science behind this stuff. Like, there's a certain amount of impressions that you have to have on a person, even when they see what you advertise or see what you've done, for them to actually make a connection and to actually want to engage in whatever it is. Right. Right. So- and that's one of the things we do talk about in the course and, and as far as passion to profit is we talk about like making sure that you understand your consistency 
builds out your value a lot of times for people and they see it over and over and now you get recognition and right after you get recognition, people want to engage and they can buy. Okay, here's the next thing. Number three, people really love to hold on to things. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I went into this garage sale with zero attachments. You hoarders. Zero attachments. Yeah. On the flip side, Fabiola <laughs> wanted to take everything home. Fab, if you're listening, I love you. But she was like, you're going to want that. Don't want- Definitely don't throw that out. Don't give that away. You're going to want that. And she loaded up like three vehicles worth of stuff. Yeah. And she was like, you're going to thank me for this later because you're going to want to bake later and you might need one of 16 different sizes of pans. So I'm going to take all 16 pans times two sets yeah. just in case you ever need them, right? And I just want to tell you- It is funny. And I love Fab and I know that one day I probably will want to make a cake and all I have to do is go to her house because she took everything. But like, if you think about the amount of stuff that I had in a full service bakery that's been there for 10 years. I mean, I have so many tools, equipment, like just things, right? When it comes down to like office supplies or crafting supplies, like my ribbon. I love ribbon. We have every color ribbon you can possibly think of, every color, every size, right? But I was like, I got to get rid of this. Like I cannot take all this stuff home. I don't want to take everything that I like home, right? And people just had a really tough time. Like people were like all day long during the wholesale for three days. I can't believe we're getting rid of this. I'm like, what What am I going to do? Yeah. People were like, well, don't you want to take this home and make cakes from home? No, I've been making cakes from a bakery for 10 years. The last thing I want to do is bake a cake from home. Yeah. And before we started, we were talking about like when you outgrow things, mm-hmm. right? And you think about outgrowing the bakery and, and making a choice. But the things that are in there are like an old pair of jeans. Right. It's like- Like from uh, seventh I, uh, grade. Yeah. Even though you liked your cross colors, you've outgrown them and they, they've got to go- You yourself. You've People go don't to, even know what cross colors yeah, are. Your, your guest jeans or whatever oh people do. Oh my gosh. But it, it's like that. It's like an old pair of clothes. Like, mm-hmm. And hanging on to it is is hanging on to the the idea, this is this, this sentimental, I get it, but it doesn't, it doesn't help you with moving forward. Right. And- you know, the other thing is people were like sad. I get it. But for me, it's not bittersweet. It's right. super exciting. And I was like, I couldn't wait to find a new owner for my refrigerator that I custom made, that I had purchased at $10,000. And that you like, left a cake in I there for like five days just right. to make sure. If it's- I couldn't <laughs> wait, though, to find a new home for all my right. stuff. And all of the big ticket items that I sold, I was like, just to let you know, like I need visitation rights. I need to know where this is going to be so I can come visit it to make sure you are still taking care of it and loving it. And so, you know, I made some really good bakery friends that are going to be taking over things like my oven, my sheeter, stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I just had zero attachment to all of that stuff. And then, you know, we cleaned it out and it started to echo because there was like yeah. nothing in there. And it just made me so excited. Like, I remember being that excited when it was echoing, when there was nothing in there and we built it, right? Mm -hmm. I remember the kids being super small when we built it and painted it and tried to make it our own. And now I'm happy to be able to clean it out, strip all that stuff down and know that someone else is going to go there and have the same memories that I was able to build as a business owner. Like, it really genuinely makes me happy so there's no sadness here. Yeah. And I hope people like understand like this is there's a lesson that Janelle just said right now that I hope people get. Right. And it's understanding like that when you remove some of the attachments to things that sometimes we romanticize about like our businesses. And we talk about this in the course where it's not your baby. Your business right? is not your baby. It's right. not a living, breathing entity. It's something you care about. It's something you work hard for. But at the end of the day, it's not a limb. It's, it's a means. It's not something that needs right. you. It's something, it's a means to whatever you're trying to create at that moment. I'm putting in a decade, technically 11 and a half years in that industry, in that business. I'm happy that we've accomplished what we've accomplished. And I'm also ready to move forward right. into something new. And it's a powerful thing to say, hey, you know what? I'm. This is exciting. Like I'm getting energized by having to move on. Absolutely. So moving on, number four. This is something that after talking to all of these business owners, potential up and coming bakers, they have a really hard time asking for the sale. Like people were like, you know, I'm trying really hard. I just don't know how to like make more money. And I'd ask a very simple question to all of them. 
do you ask for the sale? <laughs> and they literally like they go, um, what? <laughs> I go, when you give a quote, do you ask for the sale? And they're like, I mean, I give a quote. So then I shared almost with all of them the fact that we recently, you know, started construction in our house. We had 15 different contractors come in. And all of them, you know, were like, oh, yeah, we can do that. That's great. You know, I'll send you a quote in the next couple of days. Right. So they took their sweet ass time sending me a quote. Some of them took three days. Some of them took seven. Some of them never got back to me. Some of them sent a quote but never said, we'd love to earn your business. What can we do to book a time to go ahead and collect a deposit? You know, we'd be willing to start on this. We'd be able to start on this next week. When are you hoping to get this accomplished or get this started? None of them asked for the sale. Yeah. So what's funny was I shared that story with these women many, many times to tell them, like, as a customer, I want to give my money to someone who asks me for my purchase. Yeah. Would you like to do business with us today? So here's the quote. What can we do to earn your business? Here's the quote. What can we do to make sure that we're going to be the ones making your son's cake? Absolutely. All of them were like. Oh my God. A quote. Oh my God. A qu- I didn't want to be salesy, but I <laughs> salesy. never considered it like from your point of view. You literally are looking for me to earn your business. Well, that was like mind blowing. Th- yeah. For them. And that's huge because a quote is a statement. It's not a question. Right. Yeah, you're a like, quote is here, here, here. The, you know, our prices are two dollars and sixty five cents, period. Right. Right. There's, you know, so it's like anything else. It doesn't continue. No. So there's no question. There's no asking. And I'm over here like my prices are two dollars and sixty five cents. How many would you like today? Exactly. Question. Right. (laughs) So just think that's how simple it is. Put a question mark behind it. You know, I could do a whole topic on this or a whole podcast on this. But they were like, well, what do you do when someone says it's expensive? And I go, Oh, let's role play. I love this, right? <laughs> and so I go, um, yeah, this cake's going to be $575. And then they said, oh, wow, 575 And I go, yeah, isn't that exciting? Yeah. And they were like, what? <laughs> or And then they said, well, what do you say if someone says, oh, that's kind of expensive? And I go, really? In comparison to what? Oh. Um, uh, they co- literally <laughs> didn't know what to say. So that was just... Something that I wanted yeah. to share with you all, like you're all afraid to ask for the sale, but regardless of what industry you're in, ask for the sale every damn time, please. Absolutely. And s- selling yourself and selling your product is not salesy. It's like nope. it's like the marketing thing. Like, like you can't ask enough people when you put your stuff out there, you have to ask them to buy it. People That's are right. not going to make a decision just like with me at the at the drive through. Apparently, I won't oh, you're make- terrible <laughs> at the drive through. I don't talk about it anymore. It's going to make me angry. And then the last thing, number five, every single business owner I spoke to who was talking about growing their business talked to me about the fact that they thought they were going to get a lot of support from their friends and family. Mm. But it turns out their friends and family are not supporting them or people that they're becoming friendly with on Instagram are becoming more supportive, more encouraging. And so I just want to tell you, like most of the time when you start a business, it's fun and cute for your friends and family to see you do it. But most of them are not going to be your ideal clients anyways. Yeah. Regardless of what you sell. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's a lot of different types of support people are looking for. People are looking for, like, their family to buy from them. Mm -hmm. Or to share it with your friends. Share, support them, be your cheerleader. But a lot of times, I think... The tough thing about your family, when especially when you're doing, when you're trying to take on something that's audacious, that's big, that's a dream of yours, they can only see what you used to be, right? Mm-hmm. And they can only see that the flaws of you growing up and all those things, just like it says in the Bible, that you can't be a prophet in your own town, right? Mm-hmm. And so you have to be careful with with the expectations that you put out there for your family, because your family may not necessarily understand who you've become or what you'll become in the process of building something great. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people are surprised of what their family members have made of themselves because of their accomplishments, because they just couldn't see it, because they saw too much. They saw them make all the mistakes and all the bonehead things, and now they're taking over the world. Yeah, that's crazy. Last thing I want to share with you, we are going to be opening enrollment for our eight-week masterclass. It's a business class for small business owners looking to grow profitable businesses. It's called Passion to Profit. Yeah, I yeah. say this because uh, we've been doing this since 2017. If you go to JanelleCopeland.com, you can sign up for the wait list. It's going to be opening in the next probably 30 days or so. 
But most people follow me. Again, this is back to people don't really know what you're doing. You have to oversaturate yeah. it, right? So if you go to JanelleCopeland.com, my website says that there are six ways I can help you. I want to just give you a couple of ways that we can help you. Number one, we have this podcast. Please rate, review, share it. Lots of people share still don't it. know we share have a podcast, yeah. right? And a lot of women came in with their husbands and the guys were downloading it. Like, oh, this is super cool. You do this with your husband. I'm like, there are definitely is more than just a female perspective. Right. Like Eddie's right here with me talking about business and all of his experience too. So number one is the podcast. Please help us share it. Number two, if you're a business owner, particularly in the baking industry, I have a free business Facebook group where we discuss business topics with all kinds of people from all over the world. There's nearly 10,000 people in this group. It's free. It's on Facebook. It's called Cake Sense. Cake, C-E-N-T-S. Go answer the questions, join it now. We're gonna be doing tons of lives in there, free trainings. Next, we have the eight-week course called Passion to Profit. I already talked about that, but you can get on the wait list on JanelleCopeland.com. We also host retreats. I know that they're usually in person and it's still kind of COVID, yeah. but we are gonna be reopening those back up in 2021. And so there's lots of things that we're doing to help you yeah. create some sustainable profitability within your business and just become the business badass that we want you to. That's why I'm closing the business. Yes. That's why I'm I'm getting <laughs> out of the Cake Mama's business so that I can further impact an, on a greater level our industry. Right. So I hope this episode was helpful. And don't forget helpful. about the Pusher Society. Oh, the Pusher Society. Yeah. So if you've been listening to the Push Podcast and you love what we talk about and you dig it and it's helping you and you've been sharing and doing all that stuff, we have the Pusher Society. The, the Pusher Society is basically a a subscription with our the pusher group or society mm -hmm. itself where we talk about topics like the things that we talk about on the podcast but we go a little bit further because it's face to face mm -hmm. digitally well, it's, on zoom. it's on zoom and we have a call and we have challenges and we have books and all the different things that help you push through yep so you can also sign up for that on janellecopeland.com so i hope this was interesting informative if not funny <laughs> don't go through the drive through with awkward pauses like eddie don't assume that people want things Mike's way because nobody knows who the hell Mike is. And keep things easy and simple and don't make yourself small. Yeah. Those are my takeaways. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? My takeaway is I love my wife and she is right. Maybe I do take my time and too much time. You do. In the drive through And I'll work and on I it. And I just want you to speed that up. I know. You know, you like know I create a nice little note for yeah. myself so that way when I get through the drive through I know exactly what to order. Also, it's almost like you don't even know our children. Like you don't know what they like to drink. Don't, you don't know, I know our what children. kind of dressings they right, like. I just don't pay attention to all the little things they I do. I know. Like it drives yeah. me crazy. Like yeah. I'm the mom, but I shouldn't have to know all that stuff. Yeah. I mean You should. You should have a little note. But so I like I don't know exactly what Kayla wants on her pizza. But you should. No. Maybe I should. All right. She all can right. just text me. I love you. You guys, the rest Push of through. you, get your lives together <laughs> in the drive thru. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Push Podcast. Hey, we want to hear from you. So if you have a question or there's a particular topic that you want us to tackle and you want us to help you push through, you got to do something for us. You got to go to Apple Podcasts and you got to leave a rating and a review. And in that review, go ahead and leave that question with your Instagram handle so that we can shout you out when we actually answer the question. And we'll talk about that on the podcast and make sure that, hey, this particular podcast is made for you. So leave a rating, leave a review you leave your handle and until next time push through <laughs>